I have a few parts that I haven't gotten around to completely cleaning yet, so I just want to, uh, there's something wrong with me, so I just want to show you the lengths I go to to prepare parts before I'll start working on it. Like this, this is the beauty of how I've treated the whole bag. Every part is thoroughly washed and truck washed. And then, and then scrub, scrub clean, mostly scrub with nylon as hard as I can. Some parts with a little metal scrape before. After. Now you may not say it, that's not much difference. Well, it's not, but it's clean, you know. Rub it, fingers are clean. It's just, I don't mind the rust. I'll coat that and that'll be a good part. It's functionally just fine. The thing about this, it takes three or four days to dry, so it'll, I'll just put that aside so I'm going to get it off the bench. Now, I've been thinking about, you know, while I've been doing this, and it takes a while, you know, why do I like it so much? And I, I guess, I guess because it makes it clean. The bike is 40 years, you know, years old, it's a 79 model, it's done a good job to make it this far, and I'm, by coating it in this Penetrol, the Penetrol has no magical anti corrosive properties it's just that it's it's an oil that slowly thickens and it's going to take about three days to set and in that time it, it'll creep in and it'll just like exclude oxygen and therefore prevent rust so doing this in my mind is just I've just preserved it I'm, I'm yeah I'm mucking around on this bike and playing with it but I've, I've preserved it I I don't really know the long-term pros and cons of it because uh, I do a bike and have all the intentions of keeping it, but you know, then they, someone seems to want to buy them and they disappear, and along comes the next one, and this is just another one in the row. So, this is how I do it, this is how it's done for me. So, anyway, I'll go on to the next bit. I've been thinking about how am I going to do this, what, what's, what's my plan to work on this motor, and I, my plan, I think, this is just the rough idea, is I'll work on the blower, I'll pull the blower apart because I am, um, this is 140cc or if I use the other motor, 110cc and that blower is made for 500 to 1000cc so I have to quarter its size and I have a bit of a plan how I can make a quarter of the size otherwise I'm just, you know, I'll just blow the head off. So I need to make it a quarter of the size to have a realistic go of this actually functioning as a blower. So. I have to quarter the size of the blower. I have a bit of an idea, but I haven't pulled it apart, so that's going to be the next project once I've talked to you. Um, so, I've just picked up a few things. Oh, sorry. Work on the blower. Um, then get the motor in the frame. Um, the motor, by the way, doesn't fit. The mounts are in different spots. I have to work on the frame. Um, get the motor in the frame. Get it sorted, get it jetted. I've got a Chinese rip-off carburetor. God knows how I'm going to go with tuning that. It may be easy, it may not, but I've got to tune the carby to it. Sort out all the bugs because I'll have water cooled and I won't be running this water cooling. I'll be running my own separate water cooling because this will be used up for, for the pulley system here. So, and for that end, I bought, I bought another one just a basic one off an ordinary life and so electric start so I can put that on there and that way I can work on this while the motor's not going so get the motor in the frame get it sorted get it running get everything else dialed in then in the meantime I'm working on the blower the blower's got to be shrunk then I should be able to mount the blower while it's in because I've got all the other issues sorted and I know the motor by then get the blower dialed in and once I've got the blower dialed in then I add the nitrous and Hopefully that'll do it. So to that end, to that loose plan, I, you know, I painted this the other day. I showed you how to do it. I thought, oh yeah, this is my foot preg mount that goes on this side. So it doesn't fit. It touches over here. It touches there. It just it it that's as close as it gets. And then it doesn't line up anyway. Now I'm going to have to move that out to there, move that up to there, make that square or somehow. I just cut and shut it and stretch it and shrink it. And I don't know, you know, I've got to do stuff. So, so there's that. So I think, oh, that's, you know, more problem. So I get, then I get the foot, the, the gear stick lever, which is, you know, goes, works with that. That goes there. 
I'd never be able to change gears. It hits the. I don't even know if this motor was ever designed to go on a motorbike. You can't even change gears. And this is going to stay. It's going to change to a pulley system. So, so I've got to build something that, that goes out here. And look at the length of that shaft. That is an unsupported shaft that long. All it does is go through, if it's like the Honda one, all it does is go through some metal there. No bearing. Through metal there, metal there for the gear lever action happening over here. That's a... That's a long unsupported shaft with a lot of movement. I might have to support that. I don't know. I'll see what I, I, I can work on that as well. No, so, then I just so no. Yeah, while I've got this motor here playing, I'll have a look what the what the dipstick looks like because you know not the dipstick, the oil thing is. So you pull that off as you do, and and I don't know about you, but look at this. This, where am I? This is black crud. This is a motor that's never even run. And it's got that in it. Uh, uh, to me, that's not a good sign. I've, I've, that's not a good sign. So then I think, oh, I'll take off, I'll take off this water thing here. So I, I take that off, thinking, oh yeah, I would really like to take this off. But remember, when I bought this motor, I said to the sales lady, I said, or emailed to the sales lady, where do I get parts for a thing? Yeah, where do I get gaskets, all that sort of stuff? And she just answered, don't worry, high quality motor. That was it. So I cannot buy parts for it. It's not a normal life. And I've been to the pit bike shops, and they've got no idea. So... If I take this off, I have to cut my own gaskets. Everything I touch, I have to cut my own gaskets. I've ordered base gaskets to a 125 model and a couple of head gaskets to a 150-160 model and hopefully they're right. If they're not, I'm in big trouble. I really shouldn't take that hair off until I know. But anyway, so I take this off. Let me just wipe the crud off that one. And here we go corroded full of something I don't even know why they have the hole there it's crap in there it's crap how can a brand new motor that's that's never been used be full of crap uh, uh, it's just and this motor's upside down at the moment, right? Because I've got the bottom there. Most jet bikes, the water goes in the bottom of the water pump, goes through the barrel, out the top. Well, for this one, it goes into the top. And then, I'm very careful, I'm gonna sump plug one in. Hang on. The water goes into the top, And out the top. So it goes in here and out here. So the water never passes through the barrel. It just sort of transfers across and out. So this just never gets any flush. Doesn't seem right to me. Um, anyway, I have to get rid of that because that's all going. So I'll probably end up taking my water from here, which means I'll be pumping it into the bottom here and taking it out of the top, which is more in line with what you see with Japanese bikes, so it passes through. Having said that, look at the size of that. That is a huge amount of water. Then water is hard to change the, the temperature of, so it's going to take... I have to build in a thermostat. I have to more or less thermostatically block the water from travelling through this until it heats up. You know? Put temperature gauges everywhere so I can actually see how long this takes to heat up because you don't want to be pushing a cold motor, you know. And you, and you, I, I think I don't have to worry ever worry about overheating this motor. But anyway, I have to monitor it. Temperature gauges everywhere so I can monitor what's going on. So basically, what I'm trying to say is I've got problems everywhere with this thing. 
But I guess that's what you buy. That's what you get it for, you know. Boys thing, solving problems, and, and you yeah, know that's kind of fun. So I got a long way to go, but I'll get there. Anyway, the next thing up, once I put this off the table, the blower is going to be the first thing, just to see that I can quarter it in size. And then once I've figured out that I can, it'll probably take a while with going to machine shop back and forth. So that'll be a side project. The main project will be fitting this to the to the frame. If it doesn't, it doesn't fit. The mounts are in different spots, and the motor is not even going to. All part of the fun. 